think I was dropped for a moment. <laughs> okay, then uh, we'll start now. Am I visible and audible? Just give me a... Uh, yes, you are. Yeah, fine. So a very warm good afternoon to everyone, both uh, lit literally and metaphorically, because it's getting warmer nowadays. So a very warm welcome to you all, fellow Toastmasters and all the dear guests, if there are any. And I welcome to the second session of uh, what is our ambitious uh, evaluation training, which is evaluation bootcamp. bootcamp. Now, uh, uh, we understand that we had a very uh, uh, good kind of session and I hope you all agree the first session was a good start. And maybe if you would like to take a moment and unmute yourself and say a few words about how it went. Anyone would uh, wish to volunteer? And give a quick feedback of 30 seconds. Hey, this is Rama. Maybe Hi. I was. Yeah. Uh, so before uh, the that particular meeting, I didn't know about how to structure a talk and how to um, understand the understand the speech and what is the procedure to understand the speech. It is when, and that gave me a clear insight about uh, why is the speech and what is the speech and how we can deconstruct a speech. So that is what I might take away. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Rama. Thank you so much uh, for your good words. Now, uh, quickly, let's uh, have a quick recap of what we discussed in the uh, previous uh, session. And we'll quickly go back to the agenda of the day, which is the evaluation and observation, uh, uh, sorry, observation and analysis today. So as we all know that we discussed, just a second, we discussed uh, deconstruction of the speech last year. And while discussing that, we had uh, many steps to follow, like uh, we figured out some steps to be followed. So the first thing that we went through was to identify the type of the speech, which was to identify whether it falls in the bracket of persuasive or inspirational or informative or entertaining. Now, the next uh, step was, of course, to find the purpose, the why, the what and how of the speech. So when we talk about the why, how and what of the speech, we normally uh, when we say why, that is the purpose of the speech. When we say what, that is opening body, conclusion, points, title, uh, trans, uh, transitions, and the pauses that we use to demonstrate our uh, speech, to deliver our speech. Then uh, we also discussed about how, like whether to use stage, body language, or humorous or descriptive way to pass our message. The third thing, the third step that we followed was to focus on the opening and try to see what speaker has used. So whether he has used a normal way of using a quote or whether he started with a question or whether he straight away started uh, getting onto the point. Meanwhile, discussing on these all things, we uh, in course discussed the uh, fabulous world speech given by Mark Brown, which was the second chance, a second chance. And I hope you would all, you would have, you all would have given yourself a second chance to go through the speech again and and lies what are what were the points uh, what were the points that could be could be drawn by the by, by that world famous speech. Also, while discussing about, I think somebody else is on. Uh, Anandip, can you please make all of this on mute? Yeah. So thanks. So while discussing that, uh, we had one interesting portion which uh, I have not I had not given in the summary, but that I had kept for today just to uh, ensure that, just to check how all attentive we were. So we, while discussing the course to identify the type of speech, we had one interesting uh, uh, line up where we discussed how to differentiate between a persuasive speech and an informational, uh, sorry, inspirational speech. So I, just uh, to have a quick uh, feedback on this, maybe I can request somebody, can you please go ahead and explain what is the difference between inspirational and persuasive speech? as discussed in our previous session. And then we'll quickly back, go back to the main agenda of the day. Anyone? Hi, uh, this is uh, Sneha from my Airbus Senior Toastmasters Club. Hi, hi Sneha. Yeah, so. Please go ahead. Yeah. Inspiring speech is something that motivates someone to do something. And whereas persuasion is more of a trying to convince them to choose one over other options. So either convince them towards for it or why not it. 
thank you thank you so much now that was very well a bracket so when we talk about persuasive it's more about uh, making a choice between given two options or three options but when we talk about inspirational we know that this standard is the thing that we are going to talk is is a set standard is a good thing and then we give the extra push by our speech to uh, to follow the others to take up that uh, particular choice of the speech uh the cause of the speech sorry um that sums up quickly uh, our first session learning and maybe now i can uh, request chandmoli to take over and let's uh, go to the agenda of the day over to chandmoli yeah thank you very much kaushik so um thank you everyone for uh, again spending your time on a saturday and being here for the session really exciting to share and learn as a part of it before we get started did all of you have a chance to look at the video maybe uh, the first chance or the second chance <laughs> no not the second chance i'm talking about uh, what was the name of the other one no doubt no doubt right yeah so did all of you watch the no doubt speech yes yeah okay so we need not watch it now right does anyone want to watch it now if yes then we need to watch it right now or we'll go ahead and oh yes would mean people would want to watch it now we can repeat okay cool all right so what i would do is i'll share uh, the speech let all of us watch it together um okay why is it asking me to see yeah. all right shall yeah. i play it yes please Speaker number one, Jim Key. No doubt, no doubt, Jim Key. Thank you, Gavin. Mr. Chairman, and ladies and gentlemen, when you are about to undergo surgery. and the trained medical staff raise the question as to precisely where on your body the surgery is going to be it gets your undivided attention i know this because in january of 2000 i was about to have surgery on my right wrist a nurse came in to prepare me she shaved my wrist drew a circle around it with a pen and then said Mr. Key, would you like for me to write the word no on your other wrist just in case? <laughs> I said, "Ma'am, when it comes to my health and well-being, I know my feelings. I show my feelings, and I want there to be no doubt. I want you to write the word no everywhere." <laughs> When it comes to our well-being, we all want there to be no doubt. Two summers ago, I was standing in a swimming pool holding my daughter. She was wearing so many flotation devices that she could have jumped off the high diving board without getting her hair wet. Of course, I can do that too, but that's different. I looked down at this angelic two and a half year old, and I said, "Sweetheart, I am about to teach you." how to swim. Well, she looked up at me with these big, beautiful brown eyes. And with real fear in her voice, she said, "Daddy, I'm scared you're going to drop me in the water. Please don't drop me." I held her tightly and I said, "Angel, you don't have to be scared. You're always safe with me." You see, even though she had on all of that protective gear, she needed to hear from me that she was safe. She needed to know that I would be there for her and that she should have no doubt. 
What about the people in your life? What about that beleaguered coworker? Doesn't he or she need to know that someone appreciates their work? What about that family member or that close personal friend? Don't they need to know that when times are tough, you will stand with them? Of course they do. How will they know it if we don't show it? We must show our feelings to other people. We must leave no doubt. Now, I know that many of you may be thinking, Jim, you don't understand how hard that is for me to do. I do understand. Because I have been where you are. I learned a tremendous lesson after a long, grueling day at work one night when I was putting my daughter to bed. We had just finished saying our prayers, and she looks up at me with those big, beautiful brown eyes. And with excitement in her voice, she said, I want to sing the Barney song, Daddy. Now, how many of you are familiar with Barney the Dinosaur? You can admit it, it's okay, you're among friends. The last thing I wanted to do after that day's work was to sing that song. So what did I do? I crushed that little girl. I said, sweetheart, I don't want to sing that ridiculous song. You can sing it and I'll just listen. And so all alone, with a quivering voice, trembling lips, and a breaking heart, she sang, I love you, you love me, we're a happy family, with a great big hug. Come here, Daddy, I gotta give you a hug like the song says. Oh. All she wanted to do was to spend a few moments singing a song with me. I knelt down beside her bed. And I took her hand and I said, sweetheart, I am so sorry. I want you to start that song all over again because I need to sing it with you. I want you to join me. <laughs> because my daughter and I sang, I love you, you love me. We're a happy family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Won't you say you love me too? Woo! I love the Barney song. I do. I've learned, not only do I get a hug and a kiss every time, but I've learned that when you show your feelings to others, when you go out of your way to do what may be uncomfortable for you, you may just discover your life's purest joy. Now, I'm not suggesting that singing the, singing the Barney song is the answer for you. And many of you are saying, oh, no doubt. <laughs> it may be something different for you. But here's what I am suggesting. With every single person in your life, with your family, with your co-workers, with everyone in your community. Know your feelings. Show your feelings. And from this moment on, let there be no doubt. Mr. Chairman. Okay, <clears throat> so hope that you enjoyed watching that again. Yes. So now let us go into deconstructing the speech first, right? So let us look at what all you guys could come up with. So what is the title of the speech? I would want people to... No, no doubt. doubt. No doubt, perfect. Now the next one. Um, so let me probably share my. Um, 
What was the pointer visible? I'm really very sorry. I didn't realize that it was visible. Oh. So let us look at all these aspects. What was the purpose of this picture? Was it persuasive, informative, inspiring, entertaining? Calls for action. Inspiring. Uh, it was inspiring, right? Inspiring. So, uh, so call for action could be anything, right? So, let us define whether it's persuasive, informative, inspiring, or entertaining. Of this four. Do all of you agree it's inspiring or someone feels it's persuasive? Agree. Persuasive, persuasive plus inspiring. Uh, sorry, uh, entertaining. Uh, why do you see it as persuasive? So this is good. So let us discuss. Why do you feel it is persuasive? Uh, because, uh, I mean, ultimately, like, you know, we should have no doubt in... Uh, um, Showing, showing your feelings. So does someone need to persuade you to see the whole purpose of the speech is to let you know that you should not leave things unsaid. There should be no doubt about how you feel about someone. How do you feel about your friend? Yes. Because you need to express it to them. Do you need to be persuaded to believe that that is correct? Or do you already know it is correct? Yeah, we already know it is correct. So it is no longer persuasion, right? It is yeah. just that you you don't think it is a natural for you. There is a bit of inertia for us to do it, though we know that is the right thing to do, right? So it becomes inspiring. See, the speech can have entertainment in it. It can be filled with jokes, but the purpose is not entertainment. He didn't go on the stage to entertain the audience. The purpose was to inspire. So in order to inspire, I'll give information on stage. I'll do persuasion. I might uh, um, entertain, but that is all with the purpose of inspiring, right? So when I talk of purpose of the speech, you need to look at the ultimate purpose. There is only one purpose. In some cases, there could be two, three purposes, but let us look at the speech. There is one single purpose. And all of us now agree that it is to inspire, right? Yeah. And what was the, so if I have to uh, exactly tell the specific purpose, what was he trying to inspire us to do? Uh, never to shy away. Uh, to know your feelings. Yeah. To know your feelings, show your feelings and let there be no doubt about it. Perfect. Know, show and let there be no doubt. When it comes to so that is the purpose. So uh, that was his fancy way of putting it in a simpler term so that you clearly understand what was he. So this is what you have to do as an evaluator, right? You first look at how he kind of made it memorable for us by putting it, know your feeling, show your feeling. In fact, he did know your feeling, show your feeling and let there be no doubt, right? So the, with the visual cue, you'll always remember. So he did that, but in a sense, what is the purpose? The purpose, uh, the specific purpose is that when it comes to feelings, uh, if you don't express it, right, there can be an ambiguity, right? Wouldn't you have ever wondered in your life why it is powerful is because wouldn't you have ever wondered in your life if your mother actually loves you or your father actually loves you? Because they might not have shown it very often. If they, sh if they show it very often, that's a different thing. So if anyone who has experienced it, they will know, right? Had they only told me before, you know, I would really know how they actually felt, right? They would have been extremely strict with you all along. Do they even like me, right? So that is the crux of the speech that when you when you really know how you feel about someone, you should definitely show it. 
the other person should not keep guessing whether it is this way or that way, especially when it comes to feelings, right? That's the purpose. Agreed? Now what was yes. the now what was the opening? Can someone tell me? Uh, Started with a good anecdote about the hospital the surgery about to right. happen and you know, no longer. Can can someone yeah. tell me what was the opening? So anecdote was the first thing that he started, but before that he made a, a statement, and that is important for you to understand. Right. From the statement, he went into the anecdote. When you are about to undergo a surgery, that, that exactly, trained exactly, exactly, exactly. Right. So fantastic. Thank you for remembering that. So that was the opening. So when you are about to undergo a surgery, and a trained medical staff asks, which part is the surgery going to be on? Right. And he used a fantastic word there that gets your undivided attention. Undivided attention. So this is what I want you to notice with the speeches, and that's why I'm playing these speeches, right? So you you clearly understand what each of these are doing to you because you remember it now, right? So the opening was that statement, and it startles you by telling that. That surgeon statement will get your undivided attention. He got our undivided attention. <laughs> Agreed. So that was the fantastic aspect about that particular opening, right? And then he went on to explain what actually happened, and that was where he used humor, right? So uh, that in all was the opening. So then. What was the closing? What was the closing of the speech? In order to be health and well-being, uh, we all know we all should uh, let our feelings know to everyone, show to everyone. The not of. Uh, not the closing of the opening statement. I'm asking in the end, how did he close the speech? Ah, okay. yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. That was a, he. I, wow, you remember it verbatim. Fantastic. <laughs> I didn't remember it verbatim, but yeah. So, for our health and well-being, he connected the opening as well. Right in the opening, he said, "When it comes to our health, and so uh, let us go and analyze that further." But the closing, he said, uh, uh, "In order for a good health and well-being, uh, we need to know how we feel about others, and we need to show how we feel about others, and let there be no doubt." Right. In effect, this is what he closed with. Probably not verbatim because I don't remember it verbatim, but something of this sort is what he closed with, right? Agreed. Yeah. Perfect. Now let us look at the points. So, are you liking this so far? Yes. No. Maybe. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. Cool. So then first he started with uh, the, the first point from the opening was, uh, what was it? The hospital example, anecdote which he gave, right? And uh, after that, what was the next point that he spoke of? Swimming. Swimming, it's swimming pool. Swimming pool, perfect. So swimming pool. And uh, let us now recollect all the points. So swimming pool, and after that, what was the next one? The Barney song. Uh, song. Perfect. So there was Barney song. In between, he did something else. But let's talk about what he did in between a little later, right? Barney song, and then that's all, right? Yeah. So in effect, he had only three points in a speech. Right. 
then in the middle he talked about this i mean just to see if the beleaguered colleague or the nearby friend wanted the emotions to be shown so that is the kind of connector that he had used in the middle correct correct so that's why i said let us go to the transitions mm -hmm. so this is the point right perfect now let us talk about the transitions so can you tell me how did he transition with each point so let us analyze the transitions or let us observe the transitions right so can you tell me how he moved from the opening statement which was um, what the statement which got our undivided attention from there what did he transition to using that word no all over his body and then he went no doubt to no Correct. doubt perfect so first transition was from the statement to the hospital incident right so he made a startling statement and got our undivided attention that was the opening agreed yep so he gave us an extremity so we'll do the analysis later uh then from there the first point that he mentioned was the hospital incident <laughs> itself right how did he transition from that opening point into the hospital incident after saying uh, god it will get your undivided attention what did he say when it comes to a health and well being something is started like that correct and uh, immediately he went on to the uh, story at the hospital right it so basically he started off with the startling statement about the hospital we all you need to look at your journey as well you immediately drifted and you felt you were a part of a hospital and the doctor is going to do a surgery right and they are in doubt so he already put you in that place right so there was no transition as such needed he just had to narrate what happened to him so that you can empathize with him right the nurse came to prep them for a surgery and she shaved his uh, right wrist and marked a circle and uh, then she asked just in case should she put no on the other wrist right and that is where he made a joke <laughs> and joke was how he transitions into the next point right and the joke was uh, uh, i don't want to leave it to any chance put no all over me there should be no doubt right so it was re emphasize of the word no doubt you will see that so uh, jimki is uh, what do you say there are different speakers who have different ways of doing things jimki till that point in time world championship you noticed that they believed in the catch phrase and no doubt his is scratch phrase which he uses in different ways through his speech right whether it's good or not a second that has been used so first it's the observation right so he used no doubt right then uh, what he did transition to the second point was swimming pool right swimming pool yeah. swimming pool how did he transition so how did he transition from the hospital and saying when it comes to health and when being uh, there should be no doubt he said that and then what did he do how did he transition into the swimming pool two summers the... ago he <laughs> said by mentioning the insecurity that her, uh, that his daughter felt about jumping into that no that was that was that was after he started okay. with the incident right so i am asking for the transition yeah yeah Some two summers ago correct correct so so basically um, how he transitioned is that he he made you understand that when it comes to well being right uh we would not leave anything to chance you agree that so that was what he left with when he finished that incident and normally first thing we care about ourselves and then we care about our family right 
So the next thing he bought in is his daughter. So you know if you are a parent uh, or if you have seen a parent that you know how much they would care for their kid. Right? And it's not an uncommon scene for you to see that a parent would like overprotect their kid before they do something. Right? So he exactly, so what he had, he just made it into a caricature a little bit. So it was, it was funny. Okay. <coughs> So that was the transition because it was not, so you have to understand that the movement from this to that was easy because he, he made you understand why he transitioned into that story. Right? Agreed? Yeah. Okay, if you uh, chat on the, uh, what do you call it? I won't be able to see it because I'm sharing the screen. So it will be better for you to voice it out. Rather than put it in the yeah, I would also request someone to please voice it. Yeah. That would also give a more sense of participation. Correct, because I I can't see the chat while I'm sharing the screen. So yes. great. So then, uh, what did he do? So then he finished off say, saying that uh, his daughter was. Uh, in spite of that, she felt scared that she, he would put her in water, drop her in water. <clears throat> then what did he do? So that was the incident. And what did he conclude with that incident? He had to be there with her to convince her uh, well, he is there for her to help. Exactly. So it, it is like this, right? So, so much of protection is there. There is no way that she could drown. I mean, she could have jumped from the board and still not have her hat get wet. And then he joked about even if he jumped, he wouldn't get his hair wet, but due to a different reason, right? That was the joke because he doesn't have hair. So people got the connection and they laughed immediately, right? So, uh, he joked about it, but then he made a very important statement, right? Though uh, technically we are protected, right? Though you wear a lifeguard, though everything is there, still you need an assurance from a loved one to say that you are going to be okay, right? Though that by itself would not protect you, it is of no means useful technically speaking, but we crave for that. And that was the connection that he got there. Agreed? Yeah. So he said, when it comes to one's well-being, right, though you are technically protected, there is no need to go ahead and say you'll be okay, but still you expect someone to tell you're okay. Uh, <laughs> the all is well of <laughs> Three Idiots movie, right? So that assurance is needed. Fantastic. So he got that point. The next point he said was the Barney story, right? How did he move from this to the Barney story? One grueling day from office. No, 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 no. How did he move? So now he is like all that she need, though she was completely protect, protected, she needed assurance yeah. from that point. How did he move to Barney's song? That is a very, very big transition. Yeah, so that he explained uh, whether uh, what about our nearby friends or beleaguered colleagues. And then he told that uh, he had a great learning on a gruesome day. Mm. So he connected that. Yeah. Perfect. So, so let me help you understand that connection, right? So uh, this is a technique. Uh, so that is why I want to break down these speeches so that you keep your mind open. Uh, and understand these aspects. So there are different ways in which you can make the audience experience what you experienced, right? One is by engaging them and having them as a part of your scene, right? Uh, so um, there is this one's page. I, I've seen the semifinals of Craig Valentine. I don't know if I can, if I get the video to share it. Um, the, that is called as... Uh, uh, Dreams are not for sale. So in that speech, how does he make the audience get involved? Is uh, He cracks a joke about looking into his wife's uh, big brown eyes. I don't know. They have some something about the big brown eyes, all these people. right? 
big brown eyes and uh, he says uh, uh, so he, he his wife says take the money you fool right because her boss his boss is asking him to not quit to increase the salary so much but he wants to quit and do his dream of being a professional speaker right so when he went to his wife for advice she looks into him with the big brown eyes and she says take the money you fool right then that everybody laughs because this is his, his accent and everything makes it funny mind pathetically loses that joke there but he made it funny there right but after that he makes it immediately serious but you should have been there after 5 minutes when you were seated on the black leather couch in our living room a uh, regular soap running on tv with the smell of uh, freshly brewed coffee in the air and uh, warm popcorn in our hands that was when my wife turned to me and said but honey this was what you always wanted to do i want you to go to your boss tomorrow and tell him that your dreams are not for sale right so he made that point something similar to what this guy made you so he made you involved in it and he told right so you could experience that entire journey it is something similar that he did in this speech when he made you be a part of that uh, swimming pool with his daughter right now that is one incident right but how can he make you get the maximum out of it so first he shows a mirror to himself right and uh, he kind of builds the mirror he he faces it this way and he puts the incident and he builds the mirror mm -hmm. then at some point in time he'll turn the mirror to the audience right <coughs> and he'll make them reflect in their own life with the mirror that he constructed so this is uh, some kind of metaphorical mirror so what he does is he kind of uh, puts his incident right and this is what you will see all the great speakers who want to inspire the audience they would do is they'll construct something right and they'll effectively turn so right now it's facing them it's all about them the incident which happened to them something that happened to them and they'll there'll be a point or there'll be multiple points where they'll turn it around to the audience and say that have you had such a thing happening in your life did you face it okay was it your friend who wanted the assurance so basically that was the reflection he made you do. then you'll think in your mind was that required ever did i have did i need assurance though i was technically safe um when a new car was bought and which had abs ebs and everything i need did i need a shirdi sai baba on the on the what is that uh, dashboard or the vaishnav devika would towel or a cross to 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 feel secured and feel that it is safe to sit in that car right all of us have done that right do we do we need assurance so that is where our mind will wander to and he wants us to wander on that that's why he reflects it he turns it around agreed was that part understood what he did during the transition so he asked what about those family members who need uh, to know if you love them right how then he made the statement how will they know if you don't show right that was the first time he used that how will they know if we don't show we should leave no doubt when it comes to feeling we should leave no doubt right so he, this is where he persuades you to do it the first place where he kind of says you know what he nudges you not persuades you he nudges you he says you know what this is something that you should do right you understand how he transitioned the the this is just observation right so i'm putting those observations so he not just in that direction right and then he is like okay uh, you would wonder oh no that's not me how do i how do i uh, um how how would i show it to them that's not me it's beyond me i mean i don't do that so that is how most of us would react right 
and he's like if you feel that way i understand because i have been there as well and after that he tells the barney so so that is the transition he made he so if you directly move into barney song though it's a fantastic uh, anecdote you wouldn't have caught the thought process of him right he earnestly puts the thought process to you he understood that these are the connections and then he went into barney song agreed yes no maybe yes okay yes perfect yes. Yes. and you remember the barney song right so he he um, he tells what the barney song is and uh, then then he kind of uh, spoke he narrated the entire incident he made them experience it uh let us go into minute details later because i would be interested in looking at those minute details as well so then in the end at the end of barney's song he he did something else to help the audience transition right so what did he do how did he make the audience feel a part of that incident so he made everyone to sing along exactly so right in, in a smart everyone. way he said so you guys will sing with me like what i sang on that day and he starts to sing i love you right so so everybody sang with him right and after that how did he transition into the next one do you remember how did he transition to the conclusion after that now uh, he says this bani song might be for me but it might be something else too yeah but in between that and the end of the bani song there is a fantastic point which also needs to be noted so that's why i'm, I'm so you, what you said is the next point before that there is a transition into that again he used the word no doubt but in a very different way right he said uh, something to the effect of i don't expect you to sing barney song in all the cases right and some of you will go ooh no doubt right yeah it was a very clever use of the word no doubt so he used that as a callback and as humor correct point. and as a humor as well and in this case it was used with a very different meaning it was a pun right so here it went definitely not right and then he said uh, for me it was the barney song for you it could be something else after saying that he concluded saying that when it comes to health and well being let there be uh, uh, you need to know your feeling and show your feeling let there be no doubt right this is how he concluded it fair enough we have broken down the speech yeah yeah i want you to go back and look at all the pauses so wherever he made a profound statement there would be a pause and uh, jimki is a master of pause right when he pauses you will see that his adam's apple will move up and down right there are some places where he so there are some slips in his body language and vocal variety we'll talk about that now let us talk about his words used right so some of the word use was evident to us uh, it is um, the word play that he did in some places were like uh, no show and let there be no doubt right the use of it in multiple places and no doubt used in multiple ways in the speech and then um, he was able to 
did he ca so in a story right any story being said it is important for people to characterize so there are three parts in any story right one is did we talk about it already i think we spoke about it last week right there are characters no we okay there are characters and and contrast character conflict and the contrast climax yeah contrast is what causes the co conflict right so yes we did discuss this we discussed this i remember when we had mentioned this yeah yeah i'm sorry for that yeah. So, yeah so any anecdote being said right so there will be a purpose for the anecdote right so for example let us take nothing between just observation and a little bit of analysis so that you get the drift so if you take the first story of the uh, what do you say the surgery who were the characters in that the nurse and himself nurse and perfect right uh, but there was another character wrist then sorry left hand wrist okay that was a part of him but i am saying there was another character trained medical staff the surgeon right though he was not there in the scene preparing for surgery you would think of the surgeon right you understand he was an unquoted person in that story now you are so when when the nurse kind of suggests that should i put no who do you doubt do you doubt the nurse no right you doubt the capability of the surgeon surgeon you agree right so that's why i'm saying surgeon was an important character so how do you uh, all he wanted to say is that when it comes to our well being we should we don't take chances so if we have to tell that he, he needs to build a conflict around it which means there should be a place where he had a choice between um leaving a room for ambiguity and uh, having leaving no doubt right so in order to create it he created a nurse who was kind of quirky and went about and said okay should i put no in the other hand just in case sometimes uh, have you been in a hospital where a nurse or a doctor would wantedly joke like this to unset you has that ever happened to you just happened yes. to me yes it has happened once a while you have at least heard of a friend telling that right um so yeah you you can relate to it it's not like absolutely false so some of the stories right people build you know it's it is not even possible to happen this one though the chances are 30 30 you'll give a benefit of the doubt because he kind of uh puts some bit of humor in it and you feel that okay yeah it is quite possible that it can happen you agree yes and then he says okay not just no on the wrist what if he gets confused and he goes to do a surgery in my leg probably so put no everywhere right so now the conflict is that there is a possibility that uh, the the surgeon might might do the surgery in the incorrect part right why do you have this doubt we have heard stories it might not have happened to us but you have heard story that one like for example when my brother and i i mean when i was around 4 years old i guess 4 no 6 years old that was the first time i traveled in a flight my brother was the most entertaining person on that flight he asked what would happen if someone hijacks the plane what if we had to crash land right it panicked most of the people in the plane because this was back in the 80s right so uh, already people are scared right when is the first plane ride so he scared them more right not intentionally but you can relate if you were in the 80s now people it's it's a daily affair to go by flight then it wasn't so it is a little bit of an unknown surgery is now more of a daily affair previously it was a little bit of an unknown right so 
there is always doubts around it. So he puts that doubt in your head so that he can exploit that doubt. Right? So he, then he says there should be no doubt. But the doubt was put in him, put in by him in the first place by means of the conflict. Right? And that is what that story says. So in the end, when the conflict is resolved, and he says, put no everywhere because there should be no doubt. You understand? Yeah. What's the point that he wanted to say? The next thing that he says is the point that when it comes to health and well-being, you never take a chance. You would not let it to doubt. Right? You agree? So that's how you construct a story. There are characters, there is a conflict, and there is a climax where the conflict gets resolved. And if you want to use it in the most effective way, there should be a point which should naturally emerge from it. And it did. You agree? So this is how a story is constructed. I'm using the speech and the story in it to explain that aspect. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So then let us talk about his. Um, so I'm sure body language, you guys would have noticed. Uh, what was what were the things that you noticed about his body language? Changing into a kid is uh, correct. So his demeanor changes, right? The way he, he goes like this and he talks, right? So in both the cases, when he became the kid, that was what he did. Probably in both the cases, it was crying or being afraid. But in both the cases, he went into that, right? So it is relatable that way. That is one. What about the second? What, what else? He goes down on his knees to speak to his daughter. Exactly, right? So was his daughter there? No. But you can almost see his daughter there. That is called as creating a hologram on stage, right? So when you act as though a person really exists there, right? And you, you start to move around. It is like the emperor's new cloth. Have any of you read that story? Yep. It's a beautiful story because so uh, there is this emperor who wants a piece of cloth which is never been worn by anybody nobody should have seen anything like it right and uh, the the tailor who's supposed to do that is given the task of doing it and if it meets the criteria of the emperor he would be rewarded like really well otherwise his head will be served right so this guy is a smart guy uh, he comes next day with and imaginary, there is nothing in his hand. He just walks with nothing in his hand and but but carries it as though there is a piece of royal robe in his hand with utmost admiration. Okay, he carries it and people first laugh at it. He still, still doesn't laugh, right? He truly believes that that is a piece of cloth and he says it is only visible for those who have never sinned in their life only to the most earnest people and the emperor wears it right now emperor cannot say that he cannot see it <laughs> people can't say that they cannot see it which means they are sinners nobody likes to accept that and uh, in effect the emperor walks naked on the street and everybody is admiring his new clothes right because each one of them in their mind believe that it's a new piece of cloth right so that is what is uh, taking it a little bit away into reality. Uh, everybody would have heard of the, what is the most beautiful piece of painting that you've heard of? Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, right? Uh, so many people have made you believe that it's the most beautiful piece of painting. Agreed? How many of you have seen the Mona Lisa? In person or? In person. You know how big is Mona Lisa? I've heard many people feel uh, quite underwhelmed when they see the painting. Exactly. It is smaller than your laptop screen. Yes, that's true. Right. And you can only see it from 10 feet distance. 
and in so why they feel underwhelmed about it is not because the painting is bad because okay it is so much raved about it is so small in the louvre museum which is filled with thousands of beautiful pieces like in the very next room there is madonna on the rock by the same painter da vinci that's on a huge canvas and if anyone has been to the sistine chapel on the ceiling is the most intrinsic painting that anyone could have seen after looking at all those things you are in bloody rome right and you come no you are in uh, france it's not in rome that is louvre so, yeah you are in france right so uh, i visited uh, uh, italy as well so there after looking at uh, the sistine chapel and coming here and looking at this i was like I mean, why are they raving so much about this what is so much about this right so taking it back to uh, the story what i am trying to say is sometimes your body language and demeanor and your belief in that right will make audience see that for example in this case he believes that it's his daughter who's there and he goes down on his knees to talk to the daughter right so as the audience when you observe this you start to though the daughter is not there you will start to believe there is an hologram there of the daughter in your mind right subconsciously you create for yourself that is the that is a very good use of body language agreed and that's how you create scenes so that is one aspect of body language which i wanted you to observe okay what else you also describe the characters for example big brown eyes and those kid out with the i'm sorry the voice is not very clear can you be a little closer to the mic oh uh, sure so he talks about the kid having a big brown eyes so in that way we are able to visualize the kid there right that is the words right the way he words it big brown eyes that immediately gives you a so that is a use of clever use of words right so what else in the body language so body being, song i'm sorry the bani song right so he does the bani song like his daughter first then he does it like himself right so the subtlety in that it brings out the demeanor the characterization through the body language right and the bani song is a fun song so he brings that out with body language the first time he does it it's not fun right that also he brings through body language and vocal variety right what else did you observe in the body language we will go to vocal variety as well so uh if i may say there was kind of a flaw which i i'm not very sure i just wanted to discuss so when he was describing that vocal i mean the big brown eyes i mean for the second time i don't think it was needed at all and moreover he slipped i think he wanted to convey the other way and probably went other i'm not very sure i just felt like which part big brown eyes the second time when he starts speaking that and then he got he explains it in a terrified way but then he explains it in a different way ah uh, i understand why you felt that's a slip fantastic right a uh, good observation did any of you feel that there was a slip there and i'm not sure if it was really slip but i felt like so it is a slip it's it. fantastic it is a slip so you observed it see uh, this is what i want you people to build right so just because some speaker is great just because someone is great don't just get carried away your your all of us are uh, what do you say uh, we have great instincts right when you feel that something is not right you need to analyze why good make a note of that that's an observation right there was something over there which you felt was mm, it somehow doesn't make sense right and that is a very valid observation probably we'll try to reason it out when we go into analysis 
right? Okay, anything else? Uh, self depreciation in the sense uh, his bald baldness and all that thank you yeah so he used humor that way yeah. okay and then he he had a voice of empathy when he was trying to mention about the uh, friends or the colleagues who are Perfect. who are still on the other side so there is also one more aspect of body language which i quoted no show no doubt right no doubt. He uses that in multiple places, if you observe, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of Barney's song, he just jumps and kicks in the air and says, Barney's song is fun, right? So uh, all these things, so basically now you are able to observe and appreciate all these things, right? There are more, we would not have time to go through more. It's already 4.30. Right, we have not yet gone into analysis of it. So I want you to clearly understand from this point on that whatever we did at till this point is not analysis, right? How many of you till now have been speech evaluations which stop at just this? Even worse, how many of you have given speech evaluations which stop at just this? Many times. Many times. I've also done it, right? So this is not analysis. So this is the starting point of analysis. This observation is necessary. And this is the, see, what is required for a good evaluator is first to make observation. That is crucial, right? Now we understood what, uh, what are the different parts of the speech and how to make an observation. So, uh, I unfortunately, we have not moved from observation to which I wanted to do today. Unfortunately, we couldn't go. I think we can do it in the next session. Right? We, we covered this much today. I wanted to go into this aspect of... Uh, Yeah, this should have been the week two, but it took us quite a while to do the observation itself, right? It was important to break it down. So I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that because why I think it is necessary for us to break here and go into analysis the next week is because you should clearly understand what is observation and what is analysis. So. Uh, I have one question. Yes, we can now take yeah. questions. I hope it is fine for everyone. Yeah, sure. Okay, then I would request uh, anyone else if they have the questions. Um, I'll go last. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Please go. On. I I don't have a question, but I want to thank Chandramoli for actually taking a break here because I want to now go back to the speech and I have made notes while he was speaking and actually uh, make sure that there are the points that I missed, I again go back here and relate to it. So thank you so much for giving us this time. No problem, no problem. Make, see, I would want you to look at the speech four times, five times, right? And uh, kind of look at uh, uh, the small micro expressions on the face. Facial expression is something that we normally don't focus on. It tells a lot. Right. Sometimes we feel a discomfort, like what uh, Kaushal felt, you know, something is not right, probably because, uh, again, going back to uh, this one, right, wait, I can operate it from my phone, that would be better. So one, uh, one quick point here, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. So uh, may, if I may request everyone to please, uh, switch on their videos if possible so that we can take a screenshot of this session yeah this so screenshot of all of it. yeah so if you look at this there are three aspects right one is the intent the purpose with which the speaker is saying it the content and the delivery if one of them is not in sync right 
there is it misses an integrity for a small moment can that happen of course it can happen right because all these speakers are not naturally delivering it they are somewhat training they are practicing it a bit they will like, okay after this i have to do this it is a little bit of rehearsed step sometimes when it is not spontaneous so like uh, now when i am speaking it is absolutely not thought through so there won't be a mismatch between my intent and the content and my delivery it might not be good it might there might not be finesse but there might not be a bit of what do you say a mismatch between them but when someone actually speaks on stage because they might practice okay at this stage i need to do this if that body language happens a split second before right our our mind is fantastic it will know the difference intuitively we can figure out if it is natural or not right i would want you to observe those small aspects as well go back and look at the speech four times five times look at it from probably close your eyes and just listen to the speech just observe the body language mute observe the body language of the speech okay first look at the words then look at vocal variety what is he doing with his voice okay what is he doing with his body language try and pick smaller aspects right i would want you to bring all those observations so that we'll have a fantastic analysis of the speech in the next week so i i have a basic question yes i am I'm, i'm really sorry uh, if i may request everyone to please uh, switch on the video if possible or anudip have you already taken uh, yeah i've taken it thank you very much okay <laughs> thank you thank you so much yeah. okay then we'll go ahead yeah go ahead with the question please yeah yeah so uh, so when it comes to taking notes like when the speech is going on yeah. uh, i mean i just i just wanted uh, you are um, uh, inputs as well as uh, somebody else can also share their way of uh, doing things so do you continuously take notes or you wait till the speech is over and then try to recall what has happened and then come up with uh, taking notes and just because when we write something like at the time we it's there's a chance that we miss some of the key aspects of the speech so generally how people go about this perfect um so like if i have the luxury of watching the speech multiple times on youtube i can definitely take notes but uh, when i'm watching a speech so it depends upon your comfort right so i've seen people who can watch and write <clears throat> if it is demanding for you each will give a very different perspective right uh and it depends upon the person who's doing it that's why i would say there is no right way or the wrong way to do it right for example there are people who would even in giving speech right there are at least two different extreme ends of speakers ones who remember their speech word by word then there are people who just know the gist of it and they'll go on stage and they'll give the speech you can make out who is who right but if you go and ask someone who uh remembers word by word they would say the best approach for you is to remember word by word someone who go on stage and would just wing it um, just have the basic structure and do it on stage they'll say that is when you'll be spontaneous on stage otherwise you'll sound artificial so everybody will talk from their perspective because that works for them you should try out all of them right you should try out to write notes uh, and see if that hinders you in making the observation you should try to not take down notes till the end and then try to recollect backwards and try to see what happened the best way to go about it is watch a youtube video right first so you can't first take notes and then not take notes so first time do it without taking notes and try to recollect go backwards and and think of it and you write the notes then what do you do you watch it for the second times but this time you take notes while the speech is in progress right then you see if it did add value to you or not rather than asking someone else for an opinion you form your own opinion which is right for you yeah fair enough right experiment <clears throat> yeah. 
there is no right or wrong way there is a way which will suit you so basically experiment go crazy <laughs> any other question i have one question about transition yeah so, uh, here uh, in no doubt in this video we had seen three stories and Correct. one story is connected to the other other story is connected to i was thinking like uh, one to other is the transition but is that the way or is that inside the story how he started and how he is uh, ended that particular story is that called transition see what is transition see uh, let us look at it this way right a story also needs to be a cohesive unit right you can have within a story transitions because you are when people don't know how to construct a story right so there is basic of constructing a story in your story you don't have unwanted elements then there is no transition needed there are places where your story loses its strength for example you want to talk about how say for example i went to a conference i attended a toastmasters uh, annual convention and i lost my camera i went to ask another friend where it was right this is the incident okay and i want to use it as an anecdote like uh, in this case he spoke about how he got admitted in the hospital to have Uh, a surgery on his um, right wrist and he spoke about only the nurse prepping him right imagine someone says oh i went to the hospital the name of the hospital is so and so it is 2 kilometers from my house uh, my mom came and dropped me uh, my wife was there with me when the surgery was happening then the nurse came to there are people who do this as well right but for the look at what the speech what the story is trying to do so when you wait in terms of what the story is trying to do you need to make it as concise as possible you need to have only the elements which will add value to that story right so if you if you do it that way and you create a story then there is no transition needed within the story right until unless it's a complex story you can have one speech with one single story yeah. so there are uh, have you seen plays uh, theater plays yeah okay so you most probably would not have seen a one act play right you when i've seen three four acts which means in between they'll close the screen they'll change the uh, scene and there'll be the act two act three act four you have seen yeah. such dramas right yes yes right. so now between act 1 and act 2 there is a transition it's the same story but there is a transition right yeah. but one act plays do not require a transition mm -hmm. yeah. you understand yeah. that right so yes. it depends upon the story if they are happening in a single place it's a single incident then there is no transition needed but if you are if you get confused and think that just because it happened in the same venue in the same time but they are two different incidents because the conflicts are different and mm -hmm. you think that it's the same story and you put them together audience will be confused you are likely to be confused because it happened to you in the same place it's a it's a high likelihood that you might put them together mm -hmm. like your mom dropping you at the hospital is a different story your wife staying beside you is a different story that is not relevant to what you are trying to achieve the conflict is what the nurse did to prep you for the surgery agreed yeah yeah right so if you construct it that way there is no transition needed okay perfect thanks and what is transition again transition is so if you look at each of these stories he were you with him in the story were you flowing with him in the story in the sense did he lose your attention at any point in time could you clearly understand how the conflict escalated how it ended that it was a climax maybe not, not technically okay okay while watching it okay this is a conflict this is climax but 
in your mind did it play out and were you in sync with his thought process at that point in time yes uh, you could relate it that many places. exactly exactly so that is what a story does normally right so story by itself if constructed well is a very cohesive unit that you need not worry about transitions in a story unit mm-hmm. right only when you come into the story and move out of the story so now you need to acknowledge when the story ended it it leaves you with some thought in your head right mm-hmm. yeah. now a great speaker would know what you are thinking and know where you have to go so you are at you are at point a you need to be taken to point b yeah right he would know that this is the way to go and that's the transition mm-hmm. to help you understand this i'll tell uh, some small thing which uh, aditya maheshwaran spoke of um, at our uh, i think uh, coronation or or the other one uh, mm-hmm. jamburi a while ago right in bangalore so or, have you seen the movie um, what is interstellar uh, no i have no okay. idea so yes anyone knows who is the music director of that movie hans zimmer hans zimmer right um, he won an uh, academy award for that music composition for the original song track right mm-hmm. there was an interview which was which was conducted with him i am i i i have an interest in short story so one of the directors uh, spoke of this incident with me right and uh, uh, they had a session with hans zimmer on uh, music composition right? mm-hmm. and when the director approached hans zimmer he did not tell hans zimmer the story of the movie mm-hmm. he told hans zimmer that uh, uh, there is a father who makes a promise to his kid that he would return mm-hmm. and he goes out mm-hmm. he goes through a lot of struggle and the entire story is about that father keeping the promise and returning to his child i want you to compose music for that mm-hmm. he did not tell anything about them going into space going to a black hole getting lost in time coming back nothing of that sort all right yeah you understand the point yeah yeah i got it so why did he do that so if you look at it the director was very clear in the mind that there is point a point b right the story goes like this 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 and here but mm-hmm. what he wanted the music to do was help the audience move from point a to point b in the most simplest way so he yes. wanted the music to carry the emotion aspect right yes. if he had told it is space this that and all probably the music composer might have gone techno way mm-hmm. he wouldn't have been honest to classical right yes so you need to understand these finer aspects as to okay so now as a speaker i need to command and understand what the audience would think maybe i would be wrong i need to think for the audience and take a decision how should i go from point a to point b right okay when i finish the first story the audience are here mm-hmm. i want them to go here right mm-hmm. how yeah. can i easily make them move from here to here how do i make the transition for them in their minds easy yeah if you have to do that well you need to understand in your mind when i think of story a probably going back at how jinki would have constructed the speech he would have been like okay uh hospital incident then uh, the next incident i i write is uh, the what do you say the swimming pool incident the next incident i am writing is the barney song but right? in his mind he'll go like okay why am i thinking in this order what is causing me to think in this direction what happened at the hospital hospital uh, the, the nurse scared me by saying that there is a chance that the surgeon might not remember 
i felt that scare in me right and i needed someone to tell me that it is perfectly fine there is no reason to be um, doubtful about something you need assurance right and is that yeah. only when it is those extreme situations what about other places so this is a thought which might have come into his mind so were there other places where it is not as impactful but i needed or someone else needed assurance um, mm-hmm. let me think about it yeah probably when my daughter wanted to go into swimming mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. though she was wearing all these things so this would have been his thought in his mind and that is yeah. why he would have moved from this incident to this incident so how can so understanding that these are the things which ran in his mind and he wanted mm-hmm. the audience to also feel the same transition mm-hmm. he had to build a transition which does that right then that's yeah. how you build a transition mm-hmm. yeah i got it thanks i have a question yes i have a question regarding the first incident the right. first incident in the entire hospital thing laughter coming in as you said the palate cleanser laughter serves as a palate cleanser and all uh, the last session one thing i wanted why did he put that incident was it just to extract those no doubt because the entire speech was about know your feeling and show your feeling have no doubt why was that incident kept was it to just to extract that no doubt in fantastic right Good so incident. uh, so uh, that is a transition which he cleverly makes right so when it comes to feeling so I, if i tell you that you should not leave your feelings to doubt that's not the straightforward thing which you will understand right say for example let let me again come to this so that you will understand you will be able to appreciate this better uh does insurance company only sell term insurance no they sell vehicle insurance home insurance they sell thousand things right but what do they always talk about in their advertisement safety and protection of their family so so most of these would would, would talk about what happens to your family after you die right putting it straight forward that is what they will they will scare you with that thought right so when you start to think of it something that big right so i already have scared you or i've made the point loud and clear oh yeah i never considered this right that i need to plan what would happen after me which i need to be assured of the security of my family agreed this would be the thought process which will run in your mind so once i have convinced on yes. something bigger now i take the fact that i have convinced you on that and extrapolate it okay now you have considered your family what about you when you are healthy right uh, all of a sudden you or someone in your family falls in you will run along them right rather you spend say 10000 a month 10000 a year you won't run along them right more often than not you from your past experience would know that uh, at least in 5 years one person in the family would have hospitalization and 10 50000 in 5 years you take the money back right so health insurance is worth it right now i have already convinced you on term insurance now i use that as a platform because you understand that you can't expect so what is insurance trying to uh, help you fight against the common enemy is there is something unexpected things can go wrong and you need to be prepared for things when they go wrong for which they have multiple products right i convince you with the most scary the biggest one in which i make you understand the things can go wrong when it is unexpected so i carry off that and take into smaller things it is a lot easier for me to convince and that is what the speaker does in this speech he starts off with something which you will clearly understand you understand that the the surgeon should have no doubt you better understand that right 
all of the audience clearly understand that when it comes to which part the surgeon should operate, it needs to be precise, right? There should be no room for error, right? So he, he convinces there are places in life where you don't let things to a room for error. You don't let any doubts uh, kind of seep in. You agree? Then what yes. he does is, yes. So then what he says is, okay, you have such incidents, so you appreciate the fact that sometimes having it in black and white helps. But when it comes to your feelings, why don't you do that? That was this transition, right? So you don't do that because you assume that, oh no, it is understood. No, it is not. Look at these incidents. You'll know that sometimes it is not straightforward and understood. Why leave it to chance? Don't take a chance. There should be no doubt, right? So logically, this is the transition he's making. So he starts with that story and logically makes a transition. Hope that made sense. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Do we have any other question? All right, then. I mean, I just repeat, uh, if anybody has any other question, please go on. Or uh, otherwise, then we can wrap up the session. Fine. So I think we are done for the day. Uh, then I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank you, everyone. I mean, thank you all <coughs> for taking out your time and being part of this. Thanks a lot, everyone. Um, we all sign off now and we'll meet you next week. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ritim Sandamali. Yeah, thank you. Uh, please do not address me as DTM or anything like that. Please call me as Chandra Mauli. Uh, it, is, it is a lot more comfortable talking that way, at least with respect to me. And uh, I really appreciate all of your presence here and fantastic questions that you people are asking. It really helps me to become clearer with my thought process as well. And I hope that is, it is helping all of you to understand the nuances of speech better. Uh, I'm really glad that I'm doing it and I'm very happy that you have So I would want all of you to go back and look at the speech three or four times at least and try to understand the nuances and bring it to the discussion. So let us discuss so that we, we can, there should be nothing which is like ambiguous, right? Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but at least you should take, have an opinion at the end of it, right? You need to understand how to go about understanding a speech and breaking it down and analyzing it, right? So let us make that as a top priority. Um, I would be really happy if we have um, bigger, better discussions. Perfect, point taken, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much, everyone. Have a good day, have a good weekend. Mm -hmm. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye.